charging and discharging a capacitor in an RC circuit. Let's start with charging. Here we have an RC circuit. There's an R, a resistor, a C, a capacitor, an E for EMF or electromotive force, and then we have a switch which is currently open. Let's close that switch. Closing the switch allows current to start to flow around through the circuit. As current flows, charge will begin to build up on this capacitor, and eventually the voltage on the capacitor will be equal to the EMF, at which point the current will stop flowing. Now that's the big picture, but we can also write uh, detailed formulas for what happens moment by moment to the voltage and the current and the charge, all of that as a function of time. Those formulas are fairly involved. To derive them, you need to write a differential equation and then solve it. Some of you may be up to that, some of you may not be. You can always just memorize those formulas, but I don't recommend it. What I'm going to do is show you a method that you can use to deduce all of the formulas that describe the current and the voltage, etc. And all you need is to have a clear understanding of what's going on and you need to remember a few key math expressions. And those are, namely, the voltage on the resistor plus the voltage on the capacitor is equal to the EMF. It's just what happens when they're in series. The voltage on the resistor is equal to the current times the resistance. The charge on the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage on the capacitor. Now you should already know all of these if you're studying RC circuits. But the one new thing that you will need to remember is this expression right here. E to the power of negative T over RC. This expression is going to appear in every single one of the formulas that I'm going to write for the, the various aspects of this circuit. And that's the one new thing that you definitely need to remember. Uh, last and least, there is this, uh, this tau. Tau equals RC. That's called the time constant. It's really nothing more than an abbreviation for RC. I'm not going to use it, but I thought I would mention it because I know that some of you have seen it. Here we have four graphs. I'm going to draw a graph for each one of these quantities as a function of time, and then I'm going to write a formula for each one of these. Let's start out with VC. What's the initial value for VC? What is the voltage on the capacitor when T equals zero? Let's set it equal to zero. It doesn't have to be zero. It could be anything really, but the simplest special case is when it's equal to zero, and that's the first case that you always learn, so that's what I'm going to do. In any case, if you just reach for a capacitor that's been sitting in a drawer for a few weeks and stick it in a circuit, it's gonna have a zero voltage. Now, the voltage on the resistor is not going to be zero because the sum of VR and VC must always be E. If this is zero down here, then this must be E right there when T equals zero. What happens after T equals zero? As the current flows, charge begins to build up on this capacitor. And the more charge you have, the more voltage you have. So the voltage is going to start to increase on the capacitor. The sum of VR and VC must be a constant, so then the E, the, the, the VR must decrease exactly the same amount that the VC increased. What happens next? Well, you might think that this would just go straight up, you know, and make a straight line, but that's not the case because there's a, a complicated feedback phenomenon going back and forth between R and C. Namely, as the voltage on C gets bigger and bigger, the voltage on R gets smaller and smaller. The voltage on R becomes smaller, the current becomes smaller, and that current is determining the rate at which charge builds up on this capacitor. So as the current becomes smaller, the rate at which charge builds shrinks, and then so does the rate of growth of the voltage. So it's not going to, um, it's going to keep climbing, but not quite as quickly. Now eventually we know that it has to equal E, but it's going to approach E asymptotically like that. Now of course the VR has to shrink exactly at the same rate that the VC is increasing so the VR is going to drop and the VR is going to approach zero asymptotically. 
So when T is very large, the VC is basically E now, and the VR is basically zero, and you still have VR plus VC equals E. What's the equation for this? That's where this comes in. This expression is a decaying exponential, and that's what we have there. So we're going to have E to the negative T over RC. And the initial value of this function is E, so I'll just put an E in front of it so that when T equals 0, we have E times E to the 0, which is just E times 1. And there you have it, the initial value is E. So that is the formula for VR. What about VC? VC you can get from VR by subtracting VR from the EMF. So E minus this expression gives us VC. So VC gives us E, and I'm going to... Um, rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to factor out an E and write it this way, just because that's how you usually see it. What we have here is we have E times 1, which is this E that we're subtracting from, and then we have E times the negative E to the negative T over RC, and that's us subtracting off this term right here. You can see that if you added these two together, you would in fact get E just like that says. Now, the hard part is over. I is easy because I is proportional to VR. So I is going to look very much like VR. It's going to start out at some value. It's going to drop off to zero asymptotically. What's the initial value? Well, you get the current by taking the voltage dividing by the resistance. There's the initial voltage. So we'll divide that by the resistance. And there it is. E over R is the initial value. So the current is simply E over R times e to the negative t over rc. It's just like this, except you divide by r. Similarly, the graph for the q is going to look much the same as the graph for vc, because those two things are proportional. So we're going to have an asymptote. The uh, q is going to start at 0, and it's going to climb asymptotically. And what's this value of the asymptote going to be? Well, here it was e. And that's the uh, voltage. The Q is equal to C times the voltage, so we just take the voltage and multiply by C, and there you have it. So Q is equal to CE times 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. So this graph looks very similar to that because they are proportional just as those two look similar. Between these four formulas, you can answer just about any question that anyone is going to ask you about this RC circuit. What about discharging the capacitor? Well, let's imagine we uh, charge up the capacitor from the previous example, and then we open the switch and remove the EMF, and then reconnect everything, and then close the switch. So now we have the R and the C, but nothing else. What happens here? Well, the R and the C are in series, and there's there's nothing else going on, so VR must equal VC. The capacitor is actually going to function sort of like an EMF. It's going to provide the energy which allows current to flow through the loop and through the resistor. What's the initial value for the voltage going to be in the capacitor? If, uh, if we had allowed the other circuit to sit there long enough, this would have been E. If we had disconnected that circuit sooner, this would have been less than E. Really, this could be anything. I'm just going to call it V0. So the voltage on the capacitor, when time t is equal to 0, is V0. Again, I'm going to make four graphs just like before. This time, VR and VC are exactly the same. The VC starts out at some value, and then as current flows, this capacitor will lose charge, and therefore it will lose voltage. The voltage on the R will also shrink over time, because that's shrinking. Since that's shrinking, the current will shrink. Everything is going to shrink and approach zero. We start out with a bunch of energy in the capacitor, and then as it travels around the loop, it passes through the resistor and gets converted to heat energy, and eventually it's all gone, and there's, there's nothing left, and there's no current, and nothing happening. So, this is what you get. Just a bunch of decaying exponentials. VR and VC are identically the same, and then the current is proportional to VR, and Q is proportional to VC.